It's that time of year. We're at Bristol on the dirt for the qualifying races, the Camping World Truck Series. Yeah, it's dirt, baby. And uh, we've got the dirt down on the half mile here at Bristol. Vince Welch along with Michael Waltrip. Had a couple of practices yesterday and it did not go well for Haley Deegan in this first practice. Si significant contact had to go to the backup. No problem for Stuart Fries, I know he was fastest in that first session. The final practice, trouble for a couple of teammates. Austin Dillon trying to avoid Jack Wood and then Kaz Gralla couldn't get slowed down. Heavy damage to both of those trucks. They pulled a backup off the hauler and ended up repairing the two of those trucks with the parts from that one uh, off the hauler. Joey Logano was the fastest in that second practice and he is with our Josh Sims. Yeah, and Joey Logano won this race on the dirt in the cup car last year. Now you're doing double duty in the truck. What are your expectations for this heat race and for tonight's truck race? Uh, your guess is as good as mine on some of it. Uh, I'm watching all these cars pack the track in and how long that moisture stays in there, I, I don't know. The sun's popping back out. And so uh, I think we'll be ready for the track to change. Even within those 15 laps, I think the track will change some. So we'll watch the first couple and uh, see where we're at and try to get the old Planet Fitness F-150 into uh, into the show and hopefully with a good start so it's cool to drive our truck it's been a long time i think it's been seven years for me so it's nice to have planet fitness on it and uh hopefully get a win today it's like riding a bike you don't forget right joey i don't know maybe we'll see <laughs> <laughs> good luck tonight uh, michael i liked his uh, his comment your guess is as good as mine that seems like a common theme around here this well and, and you you heard him at the end i don't know a lot of a lot of unanswered questions so far but one thing i love is is what we saw with the track yesterday got a little dusty it seemed to be uh predominantly around the bottom them early on and and the track prep team and nascar went to work on that on that racetrack and man we saw a couple of great practices the second truck practice and the cup guys loving what this track is doing being able to run right out next to the fence or all the way down on the bottom the track is in great shape well the track prep has definitely gotten good grades uh, much better grades than a year ago we've got four heat races coming up for the camping world truck series when we come back One look and you know we are at Bristol. It's a little different with that dirt on there here for the second time on the dirt at and then, Bristol. And then you got to take a second look and say, we're at Bristol. <laughs> this is, uh, of course, the second year that we've run the dirt uh, on this track. Martin Truex Jr. was the winner in the truck series on the dirt a year ago. Joey Logano won the cup race on the dirt and Logano is running the truck this year. So wants to get a little extra experience. We heard from him just a moment ago, as you see uh, on the right-hand side, the lineup for this first heat race as the trucks start to roll off pit road. Austin Dillon starting from the pole. Of course, the winner of the very first dirt race in the trucks, and uh, that was at Eldora. That truck looks a lot better than it did when we saw it a bit ago, didn't it? <laughs> yes, they have repaired it. How difficult is that, Michael? Because uh, for the most part, these teams don't carry a backup dirt truck. They might have brought a truck, uh, extra truck on the hauler, but uh, as was the case with Young's Motorsports, they took the parts and right. pieces off that hauler truck and put them on these trucks to repair them. I think it's uh, the professionals that work on these trucks down there are going to get the job done right. And obviously, uh, the damage to Dylan's truck in the back was a lot less than Kaz Grala's who tore his front end up. But I, th I think this is really interesting when we're getting ready to start this race. We've got Austin Dillon on the pole who has his truck torn all to heck and practice yesterday afternoon, but knows what he's doing in the trucks. And, and like you said, a winner on the dirt in the truck series. And then back in the back, I love the fact that Buddy Kofi Kofed is, is back there because he was one of the fastest guys in practice yesterday. There's the 51 truck. And uh, I'm just going to go with Buddy. I struggle with that Cofield. Cofoid. Foid. Like Boyd, Foid, Boyd, Foid. I, I appreciate you working with me on that, Vince. I know his name, and it, I, I drive up and down the road saying Cofoid, Cofoid. But then when I go to say it, it doesn't come out right. But what I will tell you about that young man is he's got a lot of people watching him. A very successful open wheel racer. And uh, after practice yesterday, I know you're going to put him on your short list as well. I mean, he could win this race. Yes. His first ever start. In this first heat race, the 49 of Andrew Gordon was scheduled to start third, but they had to make some uh, repairs. Going to end up having to start at the back of the field. 
uh, because of uh, different chassis that they actually than what they actually brought to race. So they're going to have to go to the back. Meanwhile, we'll try to uh, chat with Austin Dillon. Hey, Austin, it's Waltrip and the boys on the Fox team. You there? Yes, sir. I got you there. Man, that truck looks spiffy after what happened yesterday. You feel good about the repairs, and the track looks good, too. Well, I feel really good about the hard work and effort that uh, Young Motorsports put in. Uh, we rebuilt the rear of this thing, so turn one might get interesting, but uh, we're going to hammer down and see what it, what it does when we get there. All right. Have a good race. Thanks. I like how Austin said it might get interesting because uh, uh, nobody really knows exactly what they're going to get. You might have an idea, but you're going to all find out together. And these these four races are going to be eagerly watched by all the competitors from the Cup Series. You know, the guys that are getting ready to race in the next race, everybody's eyes are going to be peeled to see what this track does and where you can make passes and make moves. Haley Deegan up top keeping an eye on the action. She will race in the third heat. And here we go. Qualifying race number one underway. Austin Dillon and Tanner Gray up front. Dillon on the bottom. Going to grab that top spot. Some jockeying in the back of the pack. Remember, you not only get a point designation for where you finish but you also get passing points so if you start fifth and finish third that's an extra couple of points buddy copoid on the move on the inside in that 51 truck oh three wide off turn two will that work colby howard up the middle gordon in that 49 on the move yeah he's had a great start to this race looked like a little bit of damage too on it as you see the battle for the lead heats up Austin Dillon, trucks all running pretty much lower than we saw yesterday in practice. We'll see how that changes over the course of these races. Howard in the 91, Gordon in the 49. And remember, Gordon started at the back. They're running for fifth. Timmy Hill and the nine of Blaine Perkins with Jack Wood behind them in the 24. Jack with a nice run there off turn two. Closing in on that battle ahead of him. Remember, these are 15 lap heat races. And your total points from your finishing position and your passing points of all four heat races, they'll take those points, and that's how the lineup will be set for tonight's 150 lapper. How do you think that Young's Motorsports team is feeling about that handyman work they did last night on that 02 truck? He had that, or excuse me, the 20 truck. He had that thing torn all to pieces, and yet out there leading on the very next lap he gets to run. As Austin said, a lot of hard work went into the repairs. But Parker Kligerman in that 75 up there running third. Wow, this is a great battle. Kofoy oh. down on the bottom, trying to close the gap on Kligerman. And you could see the, oh, look at that, side by side, Parker heating up Tanner. Good corner. Got the feeling Kligerman's a little quicker than Gray, but being able to get there and then get by him, two different things right now. Going to be a little conservative maybe in the heat races compared to what we might see later on in the feature. A lot of mud on the noses of these trucks, Vince. I haven't seen any spray from the overflow on the radiator, so I think they're okay, but that's a, a bit of a concern. I see there on the 15 truck of Gray, we see some water blowing out of it. Got to make another seven laps. Yeah, the nine. Yeah. There is the water off the nine as well. And uh, the track is certainly as wet as it's going to be water. for Keep these heat races, for here. sure, as we've gone past the halfway mark. I want to tell you something that's frustrating, Vince. If you're Tanner Gray there blowing water or, or Blaine Perkins, as you see there, it makes those six, seven laps you got to run seem like 60 or 70. You're just very, very nervous about making it as Tanner Gray is off the pace there. Josh. And trouble for Tanner Gray. They said if it keeps pumping water the way it was, we're going to park it. It kept getting worse, and they said we got to bring this in. Tanner Gray definitely upset over the radio just a few minutes ago. Uh, he was running second. 
Meanwhile, if you look at the grill of the 20, uh, there's the 51. Look at all the mud on it. And then how about the grill of the 20? Pull in. Pull in. Oh, they're getting the word for Buddy Kofoid to pull in as well because of all that mud. Now look at the grill of the 20 because no one is in front of him <laughs> kicking up the mud back to him. His grill is clean. And that, that should just improve, obviously, as these trucks run some run the groove in. And the one thing you want to be cautious of is make sure that truck is good for the race tonight. You know, there's some drivers that aren't guaranteed in tonight's main event, Vince, and if that gets on their radiator, they'll have no choice but to just try to run at home. Just a couple of laps left in this first heat race. Austin Dillon, no real pressure. As Kligerman, several truck lengths back, running second. Austin Dillon, the winner of the inaugural Truck Series race on dirt back in 2013. And he's going to win heat race number one as he brings it around three and four one last time. Nice run for Parker Kligerman for that hometown race team. Checkered flag for Austin Dillon. And how about the 49 of Gordon? Andrew Gordon had to start from the back and needs to race his way in for the race tonight and ends up finishing fourth. Job well done. So Austin Dillon wins heat one with Parker Kligerman second. And a tough break for Buddy Kofoid and Tanner Gray, who had to pull off because of all that mud on the grill. Close quarter racing on the dirt at Bristol. There's your winner of heat race one. Austin Dillon started on the pole and led them all. Of course, tomorrow is Easter, and we'll have an Easter celebration beginning at 4.30 right here on FS1 with Chris, or, uh, Chris Tomlin and uh, Max Licato. FS1 race day and ultimately the cup race. Let's go downstairs to Josh. Here with Buddy Kofoid. Unfortunately, you had to pit early in heat race number one. Can you let me know what you were battling there? Yeah, just uh, starting in the back, um, you know, with right up the track rework, you're kind of bound to get caked with mud, and, and um, you know, I was trying to stay out of the tire tracks, people in front of me, so I wouldn't happen as, as much as I could, and uh, I just covered the, the radiator opening, and, and eventually just got really hot, and I uh, had to pull in, so, um, but you know, the KVM guys give me a really fast mobile on Tundra, and um, it was looked like it was going to be a really good points showing for our e-race to be good good for the race i think but just uh, can't really control that some things you just can't control good luck tonight buddy well and you got to keep an eye on the big picture too for buddy cope Floyd and that kvm team and uh, that's why they pulled it in no choice don't want to blow the motor up saw how thick that mud was on the nose of the truck here's our look at our uh, heat two starting lineup another Interesting lineup, if, if you ask me, Vince. Back on, in 10th spot, Mike Marler. He won a big dirt race, late model dirt race here in the Bristol area Thursday night. Now he's going to try to battle his way through the field. Let's see what Matt Crafton is thinking. It looks a little harder than it was. Yeah, I think most of that happened in the first five, eight laps, and then it kind of settled down. And I think that mud on the nose, uh, that, that should... Shouldn't be a problem in this race. I think like the spotter was saying, you know, it happened early and then the track dried up some and they were able to uh, to run to the finish. So hopefully that's the case. And the more the track is run in as well, the less mud that will fly. Uh, but uh, hopefully it won't be an issue. Tough break for sure for Kofoid and Tanner Gray in that first heat race. Ty Majeski and Tyler Ankrum up front. And boy, Hosevar made a dive down to the bottom in front of Crafton. Gunning for that second position now side by side with Ankrum. That was an aggressive move. That was fancy, wasn't it? He had just enough room to dive in there and made it work and now takes over the second spot. Putting Ankrum on the outside and Hosevar's got that second spot. Crafton third and Majeski 
out front. Tyman Chesky has been an interesting story this weekend. Coming into this week, had not run a dirt race in his life. And he looked really sporty in practice yesterday and right now is out front of this second heat race. I think it's an indication of his ability, the car control or truck control in this case. And Majeski's talent has shined this weekend. Crafton's got a lot of mud on that nose. See if he's going to get away with it. Hosevar is able to have his clean. And you can see the mess there. Last uh, first heat, it was about halfway when we saw some water starting to spray out of these engines. Zane Smith in the 38. And how about that 30 truck? Tate Fogelman side by side. Some good racing for position there. That's the fifth spot up for grabs. Smith, of course, a two time winner already this season. Fogelman trying to make it work on the top. That's Tyler Rankrum just ahead of him. To me, that's the fun part about dirt racing, Vince. You know, you can see a guy just trying to just dig down on the bottom of the racetrack. Another guy up on the, on the higher part. All kinds of different grooves and lanes these drivers have to choose from. Fogelman still trying to get that position, and Ankrum will, might come into play just ahead of them. So Fogelman gets the spot from Smith, and now let's see if they can get past Ankrum in that 16. I like where Ankrum's going right now, kind of starting to wander up the racetrack. We see most everybody dead down on the bottom, but he's trying to make it work up top a little bit. That's what a race car driver wants is options, Vince. You want to be able to try something new and different if you're not making ground on the guy ahead of you. Fogelman and Smith have definitely closed the gap on Ankrum, though, as they narrow the advantage. Ankrum running fourth. And remember, passing points up for grabs, so every position is important. Gets you a little closer to the front for the feature. Ty Majeski is your leader, just past the halfway point. Six laps left in this 15-lap heat race. Last time by, the top three trucks ran the same speed, <laughs> exactly the same time. And we saw that mud on the grill in the initial heat race be such a factor. Not the case here in this one as the track starts to get run in and dry a little bit, a little drier each time out. Hosevar keeping Majeski honest. Start to close the gap inside of a half second now. He's got a little bit of breathing room over Kraft in there, Vince, and that's enabled Carson to move around somewhat. A little bit higher groove in one and two, and the same in three and four. The Thor Sport trucks have looked good this weekend. Big yards, fast in practice yesterday. Felt very comfortable. You see they're running first and third in this heat race. Meanwhile, Ankrum has gapped Fogelman a little bit for fourth. Just a couple of laps remaining. Got to give it to Zane Smith. He's lost some ground the last couple of laps, but he was trying that high groove like we saw Hosevar doing as well. Now he's right back down on the bottom. You're learning a lot, Vince, right now. Not necessarily what does work, but also what doesn't work and give you an idea of what kind of playbook you can have when we go racing tonight in the main event. Last lap of heat race number two, Ty Majeski and that's 66 for Thor Sport. Coming through turn four and on his way to the checkers. You're playing a good job, bud. Well, so far we've seen the person who started from the pole win both races. We've seen some good movement back in the pack, but he who has started on pole has been in the key position and has been able to hold on to it in these first two heat races. Kaz Gralla hoping that will be the same for heat race number three as he will start from the pole. Well, his truck was tore all to pieces last night and 
worked out all right for Austin Dillon, didn't it? It did, it in the wreck as well, and won his heat. There you see the points. Majeski with 10, and Hosevar had 11, thanks to the passing points. Two heat races down. We're halfway through at Bristol. Back at Bristol, and through two heat races, Parker Kligerman has scored the most points. Remember, you get points for your finish and passing points if you improve your starting position. If you don't improve your starting position, it's a zero in regards to passing points. So Kligerman and Hosevar have scored the most points so far. Neither one of them won their heat race, but because of their passing, they scored the most points. You can see these teams have really went to work on their grills after what they learned from earlier. It's, a, it's not unapproved. NASCAR allows the teams to work on the noses, and the team is looking to do so, not only taping it in a different, different configuration, Vince, but also spraying some, some oil or Pam, whatever the, the substance might be, to try to help the dirt slip off of it. Our Heat 2 winner, Ty Majeski with Josh. And Ty, you say you don't have a lot of experience out there on the dirt in a truck. Doesn't look like it, man. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I was skeptical coming into this weekend. Obviously, I'm a short track asphalt guy. Um, this is a lot of fun. It's something different, a new challenge. Uh, you got to search for the moisture, and uh, that element is, is different. So uh, it's a fun challenge. Uh, we've had a really, really fast T-Sport uh, Toyota Tundra TRD Pro all weekend, and hopefully we can keep it going tonight. Your Heat 2 winner, Ty Majeski. Yeah, impressive indeed through practice yesterday and the heat race today. Here's why they've been doing those front end uh, work on the front ends of the trucks. Tanner Gray had to come in from second place in his heat race. Buddy Kofoid had to come in from third, as you see all the mud that had been accumulated on the front of those trucks in heat race one was not a problem in the second heat race. You know, and we got a lot of rain this morning, Vince. I, I woke up at 5 a.m. To, to downpour, so that definitely affected the racetrack. NASCAR and the track officials did their best to pack it in, but it was just simply a little bit too wet to start to start that first tee, but now it's fine. As you see our lineup for the third heat race, or qualifying race, if you will, as you take all the points from finishing position and passing points to set the lineup for tonight's 150 lappers. We're on board the bumper cam with Joey Logano. Haley Deegan was supposed to start fourth, but she's had to uh, go to the tail. Joy they went to the backup truck. I was going to say, Vince, Joy Logano took advantage of that. Haley having to drop to the back and moved up from his sixth starting position to fourth, and now he's around the outside for second. Great move by Logano, will garner some passing points. Infinger with the lead and a little side-by-side -side with Eckes and Kaz Grala. Eckes is going to get that third spot. So a lot of action here on this first lap. Ben Rhodes, meanwhile, trying to corral it with Matt DiBenedetto going underneath. What about Noah? Well, how about Rhodes and DiBenedetto putting Chris Wright in the middle? That's Norm Benning in the sixth truck. He's having a nice run early, but man, I Look like where Rhodes. Ben Rhodes is going, don't you? The Inside. confidence and speed of Ben Rhodes around the top side. Benning putting up a fight momentarily, but unable to hold off Rhodes. And now Haley Deegan trying to get in and take advantage. And here comes to Benedetto. Grew up on a dirt track in Northern California, and he's going to power into the side of Deegan. Doesn't work. Haley Deegan now trying to get around Norm Benning. Benning's got to race his way in, but he's losing spots. Can Haley make it work? Not this time. Still working the top side. Meanwhile, De Benedetto goes to the bottom. Norm gets put in the middle. And both Deegan and De Benedetto and get clear. around. Nice and smart here. Don't nice it move out. by Haley Deegan. De Benedetto making it work also. Meanwhile, on the left side of the screen for the lead, Grant Infinger out front, Joey Logano pressuring, Christian Eckes in the picture there in third. And our pole sitter, 
Paz Grala. He's dropped back to the fourth position. Great view from the bumper cam of Logano. That is so cool. Nine laps to go. Nine laps to go. Just a little over four miles, Vince. But man, it seems like forever when you're slipping and sliding and trying to win your heat. Infinger is good on the dirt also. It'll be a tough pass for Logano. Infinger, five truck starts on the dirt, four top fives. Feels comfortable. Listen to Joey work that throttle. And here comes Ben Rhodes. Oh, no, Haley's around. Haley Deegan has gone around okay, down in turn go. two, Call and the out. caution Call is out. out. Unfortunate for Deegan. Oh, it's here, been a, fired up and roll here. not just a tough weekend for Haley after the contact yesterday, sent her to the backup truck and cost her a bunch of practice time, but she has not caught a break this season. I mean, it has been a tough go for Haley Deegan. Three finishes outside the top 30. 17th at Daytona has been her season best. And uh, she just lost it on her own going into turn two. You know, you pointed out yesterday, Vince, during practice, we are seeing a lot of trucks have issues over in turn two. Most all the spins happen there. And uh, another one around as Haley had to get away from her. She was solid in the running order. A little bit nervous about her point situation. You mentioned the struggle she's had this season, making sure she's going to be able to race tonight. Yeah, we'll she to, could miss the show tonight. That's, that's I'm saying. She's going to have to hustle it up here. Mike Hillman, Jr., crew chief for Deegan. You should not be let down. It's going to be one to go next time. Bye. And as mentioned, she's caught some tough breaks, but uh, got a rally. Got a rally here as we're halfway through this 15-lap heat race. Good on me. I like that that communication with the team. Yep. You know, I'm, it's turning good. I just yep. got away from me. The little turned a little too good, and that just lets the, the team know exactly the direction the truck is heading handling-wise and how they might be able to address that if she's able to get her way back up through. She's fast enough to pass enough trucks, I think, Vince. We'll just have to see if she's got enough time to do it. Getting lined up again for this Two wide restart. Remember, only green flag laps count in the 15 lap heat races. It will be interesting to see this battle at the front. Infinger and Legano got the feeling that Infinger was a little quicker, but or excuse me, Legano was a little quicker, but just couldn't quite get around Grant. Well, they were when they were running single file. We'll see how it is on this restart. They were both running dead down on the bottom of the track. So Joey's going to be up in the outside. Can he take advantage of that? We saw Christian Eckes make some big moves down into the corner, as we did with Ben Rhodes. Here we come. That'll be Eckes Ready. on the inside of row two and Kaz Grala beside him on the outside of the second row. Ben Rhodes on the inside of row three. He has speed and has shown aggressiveness and comfort. Can he make a move toward the front as Logano gets that top spot from Infinger around the outside and Rhodes working the outside as well. Rhodes around. Eckes and now going to work on Infinger. Ben Rhodes has been the most impressive through these <laughs> two and a half heat races we've seen so far. He has really shown speed and the ability to put that truck wherever he wants it. That's Rhodes in the 99. His teammate Eckes in the 98 behind him. De Benedetto in the 25 runs fifth. And Haley Deegan. Working on positions. She's grabbed a couple. One from Norm Benning, another from Chris Wright. And last time by, she was faster than anybody on the track except for our leader. So see if she can keep that momentum going. Rhodes still working on Infinger, trying to grab that second spot. Eckes closing up. Logano is out to comfortable advantage. Four laps remaining in this heat race. Eckes isn't giving up, trying to battle against his teammate there, Ben Rhodes. He's poking the nose a little bit lower than Rhodes, but hasn't made any progress yet. Haley Deegan still back in that seventh spot. 
Kazgrala just up ahead in that blue 0 2 off turn two. He's trying to get the spot away from Benedetto. Just two to go. Kazgrala up ahead of Haley Deegan as she tries to close in for position. Meanwhile, for second place, it's Infinger and Rhodes. Rhodes still trying to work that top side. <laughs> He's fun to watch. He is not giving up. Final lap in heat race number three. Rhodes still leaning on it up top. He's making Infinger earn it. Has Grala to the inside of De Benedetto just behind these two. Good side-by-side -side battle for second. Who is it going to be? It looks like Rhodes is going to get him. Ben Rhodes used that banking and came off turn four, got a little better drive off turn four, and nipped Infinger at the line for second. Deegan raced back to seventh. We think that could do the trick of transferring her into the main event. So I'm getting older by the day with you, you know what? I feel you, man. <laughs> that sounds like relief, worrying yes, about yes. whether we're racing or not, and uh, oh yeah, we made it. She sounds like she's keeping the right attitude, though. Joey Logano, the winner of heat number three. One more to go. Joey Logano from sixth to first in that third heat race earns him the most points so far, as you see. The most points gained through three heat races. Rhodes, also in that heat race, came from deep in the field to finish second in that heat race. Haley Deegan, who spun and went to the back in her heat race that just concluded, ended up getting up a couple of positions to seventh from ninth, and I believe that's going to be enough to get her in the main show tonight. And she's with Josh Sims. Yeah, Haley Deegan just getting out of the truck and debriefing with her team. Haley, I know it's been a rough start to the weekend, but you got some fast laps out there. What was your takeaway but from what you were able to do during that heat race? Hi, it was a little wild because I went out there. This this ain't our dirt truck, <laughs> our dirt, dirt truck right here. So uh, just trying to make this truck work and do the best we can. And the guys honestly absolutely killed it. It was definitely a different feeling for me. It's not very similar to my other truck that I drove, but honestly, it still still was great. Still had a lot of speed, which is all that matters. Took me a minute to get used to it. Uh, definitely made too aggressive of a brake adjustment while I was in there. Ended up getting loose over there, and uh, I was like, I ain't, I ain't sliding into the inside wall, so I was like, I'm just going to finish cutting it, let it loop around. But uh, honestly, that little adjustment right there, that brake adjustment, it's a good tool to have inside the truck. So I think that going into the race, we might make a few little adjustments to the truck, and then from there, I take over. Appreciate your time, and good luck tonight, Haley. Thank you. I like her happiness and her energy, the, the yep. feel of the truck. She talked about it being a different truck. All those things are, are important to relay to the crew about how to work on that truck so she can be better tonight. Here's our lineup for this final heat race of the four. Remember 15 lapper, green flag laps only county. Husband and wife on the back row there. Talked to Stuart last night and said, uh, who drew for y'all? <laughs> It was a blind draw that set the lineups. And with Dean Thompson and Chandler Smith out front, Thompson in the 40, Chandler Smith in the 18, Chase Elliott in the seven on the outside, trying to work in for second. This is a stacked heat race, isn't it? There you see Stuart the Friesen sense. in the 52, Jessica Friesen in the 62. Jessica's trying to keep pace with Stewart. Stewart with a three truck pass there and Chase Elliott's heating up Chandler Smith for the lead. Well, Chase Elliott really got this seven truck rolling in that second and final practice yesterday evening. Found some really good speed as Friesen picks up a spot from John Hunter Nemechek and now works on Thompson for fourth. Stewart going up around the top side. John Hunter Nemechek will see that and say hey man there's Grip up there. I need to slide up top, and that's exactly what he does. Well, really, the comfort zone for Stuart Friesen on this dirt, as you see, Chandler Smith has gapped Chase Elliott just a bit now, about a couple of truck links. 
It's so, you got to call Stuart Friesen one of the favorites for tonight, considering no. how he makes his, for the most part, his living on the dirt tracks uh, night in, night out. He wins all over the country in, the, in dirt cars, and so this is right up his alley. We kind of surprised he wasn't any better than he was here a year ago. He's had some issues there, but uh, I expect him to be on my uh, short list of favorites. Well, Chase Elliott really heating up Chandler Smith now as Elliott looks topside. Ten laps left right on the bumper. Again, Smith trying to hold off Chase Elliott. And as you can see, just, just behind those two comes another pair of fast trucks. Derek Krause trying to close in on Chase with Stewart all over his bumper. That's for third. Krause, the pole winner last year at Knoxville, finished fifth in that race. And Friesen in the 52. Stewart's wife, Jessica, back in eighth. Stewart looking inside, really on the bumper of Derek Kraus now, but can he make a move? Where is the spot? Can he go down, get it down underneath? No pressure, work how you want. Great yeah. view from Stewart Friesen's visor. Listening to that engine churn as he just, he just jumped on that gas pedal. See what he does here. Tried to clobber it, wouldn't stick, had to work the gas. Lost a couple of truck links to Kraus. Right out in front of him, the top three. Kraus in third. Chase Elliott still working on Chandler Smith for the top spot. Elliott continues to take a look up high, but just cannot get the drive off to get that spot. Rubbing the back end bumper of Chandler Smith that time, but to no avail. Might have even opened the door a little bit for Derek Krause. Five laps left. Krause has driven away from Stuart Friesen, too. He wants to be a part of that battle for the lead. See the overall points on the bottom left portion of the pylon. Logano from sixth to first in that previous heat race, leading the way so far. Would be on the pole for the race tonight. Good battle for these top three positions. Chandler Smith in the 18, Chase Elliott in the seven, Derek Krause in the 19. Krause working the bottom against Chase Elliott for second. That's a couple of Napa guys there, Vince, doing battle. <laughs> Jessica Friesen back in eighth, still needs one spot if she's gonna get in for the race tonight. That's Dean Thompson up ahead of her in the 40. That's some good coaching by the spotter, telling her good job, like that line. You got a gap behind you, go get him. Two more laps. Just a couple of laps to do it, however. Got to close in quickly. About a second difference. One lap left for Chandler Smith. Chase Elliott running second. Derek Krause third, Smith heading in to turn three. Elliott maybe take one more look at it. Not going to be able to do it. Chandler Smith's going to hold on and win heat You're race number four. Really nice work, man. How's it? Jessica gave it a good run after Dean Thompson, but couldn't quite get there. Tough break for Jessica Friesen. Not going to make it here at Bristol for the second year in a row. Chandler Smith, no stranger to running out front. Already with one win this season, Chase Elliott finished second to Smith. Back at Bristol Motor Speedway, the four qualifying heat races complete. And the most points accumulated in those heat races by Joey Logano and Ben Rhodes. So Logano will start from the pole and Rhodes will begin alongside on the front row for tonight's 150 lapper. Chandler Smith won heat race four. He's with Josh. Chandler Smith, your heat race four, your heat race four winner showed a lot of speed out there. What did you learn in practice and the heat race that you can use tonight? Uh, yeah, the second practice yesterday, it was obviously pretty slick out there and uh, we got to 
charged me Toyota Tundra, handling really, really well. Uh, top, bottom, wherever I needed to go, it was handling really well. So we really focused on that. We didn't know how it was really going to be right here because of how uh, how moist everything was and how much grip the track was going to have in it. So uh, we kind of were just winging it, and it turned out to be really good. So happy for all these guys, happy for charging me, and uh, look forward to the main event. Chandler Smith has a win on the concrete, looking for a win on the dirt here at Bristol. Yeah, one here on the concrete last fall. A little different animal <laughs> on the dirt. I think it's just incredible Tonight. how different it is, Vince. You know, when you come to Bristol, you just think about <laughs> grip and how hard you can drive in the corners and mat that gas. And we have quite a different scenario here with the dirt on the track. It's about finesse and slipping and sliding. 36 will start tonight. And uh, we mentioned that Joey Logano and Ben Rhodes will be on the front row. Logano on the pole. Stuart Friesen, Parker Kligerman, impressive in those heat races. Hosevar, Chandler Smith in row three. Austin Dillon with a wrecked truck when he left here yesterday. Top 10 starting spot tonight. Really been impressed with Ty Majeski so far this weekend as well. He's in row four. Colby Howard, I know, has caught your attention a couple of different times, Mike. Yeah, he's been fast, and it's been fun to watch him, and, and just aggressive, being able to really hang that truck out. Tyler Ankrum is another guy I got my eye on, starting back in the 20th position. Marler and Gordon in row 11. Harrison Burton down from the Cup Series. Haley Deegan making the show there in row 13. Taylor Buddy Gray with those... Boys. Heating problems we saw earlier. Yeah, Buddy Kofoid and Tanner Gray were running second and third in their initial heat race and had so much mud on the grill they had to pull off to protect the engine. So that'll be exciting seeing those two come from the back tonight as Norm Benning and Jessica Friesen were the two that did not make the show for this evening. Back to Josh. Ben Rhodes starting on the front row for tonight's race. I saw you running the top line, being aggressive out there. What did you learn during practice and qualifying? Yeah, I um, I just hope our race is less eventful than that. I think at one point we were battling for last on the start, and I'm just watching Joey drive away. I think he started fourth. Um, so was frustrating start, but after passing all the trucks, you know, I started feeling better about it. Uh, just needed more time and the track to come to us a little bit. I, it was a little bit too tacky for, for my favor uh, with the way that we have this truck set up. So... As the night goes on, hopefully we'll just get better and better. Now, you're one of the few out here that says you like the dirt here at Bristol. I think you're the outlier. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know. I, I think my stats, honestly, I, I look back at Concrete Bristol, and I, I think we finished fifth was my best finishing position. But now, uh, second last year, second in both practices, second to start the race. I just need to improve the position by one, and I'll be okay. I just, I don't know. The Toyota Tundra's fast. I just want to, you know, give my guys something they can be proud of. Ben Rose just wants a taste of victory once again, guys. Yeah, it's uh, been interesting to watch him. He certainly feels comfortable. He's been aggressive. Uh, Rich Lucius has done a good job with some help from Tracy Hines, former USAC national champion who works at Thor Sport as well and proficient on the dirt. Really been aiding that group with the 99 camp. Here's a look at Ty Dillon, who, who as the cup guys are getting ready to roll here for their heat races, and the, which begins uh, coming up at 6 o'clock. Of course, remember, we'll be on FS1 tonight at 8 p.m. with the 150 lapper. There's Larson hanging out. You Hi. took a little money from him on the golf course today. You want to talk a little trash while well, you got him on the screen there? Well, I just was doing research. You know, I want to make sure I understood everything about the dirt. And we had a good time this morning. and. Uh, it's always cool to hang out with the drivers and hear what they're thinking, especially with this animal and that driver yes. on the dirt. He knows it all. Well, a couple of good dirt guys right there with uh, Chase Briscoe uh, with the, in that conversation as well. And Ty Dillon. He yes. does a lot of dirt yep. racing. America's Day at the Races coming up next on FS2. And the cup qualifying races are just ahead, so stay tuned. For Josh Sims, Michael Waltrip, I'm Vince Welch. Look forward to 150 laps on the dirt tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern on FS1. Stay tuned.